Hello everyone! Today I've got something a little different than my previous videos. I have a programming video. For the past few months I've been working on a games engine called Ape3D. It aims to make the transition between 2D and 3D programming just a little bit easier. When I first got into 3D development, it was incredibly daunting to see the pipeline-based programming system. My engine, Ape3D, takes an approach similar to Java's graphics library, so we can do simple calls like g.drawRect or g.setColor. I've built this game here, Voltron, to show off some of these features. As you can see, we have this nice model here, as well as a randomly generated world. These models were created in Blender. My engine has support for .obj files, as well as .obj animations. So you could simply create your models in whichever program you prefer, and load them right up. Voltron here supports third and first person, as well as some basic collision detection on all axes. The world is randomly generated, and if you can see in the back, might be a bit hard to see, but the faces which are far away are actually wireframed. And this isn't built into the engine, but it's really easy to change the rendering mode of your game on the fly. So that's really helpful to not have a fixed, fixed rendering mode throughout the whole engine. If I toggle off the fog here and zoom on up, you could see this dynamic effect here of switching between wireframe and fill mode. Voltron may not seem like that complex of a game, but it actually is quite a good test of the engine's capabilities. On the screen right now are over 3,000 cubes, all of which have alpha enabled. Alpha would be our transparency channel, but what that means is we're not exactly able to cull as many faces as we would have been able to before. Had alpha been disabled, the face back here, behind this cube, would not be visible, and therefore the engine would determine whether or not to draw it. Seeing as how it would not be visible, it would not be drawn. In Voltron, the only face culling I can do is ones directly behind my player. So that leaves about 3,000 plus faces being drawn every render pass. As you can see, the engine's holding up with me recording at a pretty smooth frame rate. I think right now, yep, we're around 55 FPS which isn't bad. 3,000 plus animations, multiple frames in .obj files, all compiled into VBOs and display lists. In the back end, of course, you won't have to do that. And drawn on the fly. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Ape3D will be out hopefully summer of 2013. Its 2D counterpart, Ape2D, should be out soon. I just have to finish up the documentation for it. And that'll be all. Thanks for watching.